When you think of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, or NSAIDs, think of combating those prostaglandins that are mediating symptoms of fever, edema, and pain classically associated with inflammation. But how did all those prostaglandins get there? The key precursor molecule here is arachidonic acid. Sounds familiar, right? That's because we had already run into this important molecule during our antiplatelet Little League sketch. Arachidonic acid was embodied by an inactive bench warmer, waiting to be converted into an active player on the field by head coach Cox. At Sketchy, arachidonic acid will be abbreviated AA, depicted beside the AA Major League dugout. Again, think of the players in the dugout as precursor molecules just waiting to be activated. Arachidonic acid is a polyunsaturated fatty acid normally floating around with the rest of your phospholipids in every one of your cell membranes. Before prostaglandin synthesis can occur, however, it first must be released from the rest of your membrane phospholipids. It all starts with injury. Various chemical or physical stimuli are responsible for an increase in intracellular calcium. This activates the calcium-dependent translocation of phospholipase A2 to the membrane where it goes around releasing fatty acids from glycerol. Specifically, it hydrolyzes the bond holding arachidonic acid to the membrane. Therefore, phospholipase A2, or PLA2, catalyzes the first step in the arachidonic acid pathway, setting off a cascade of inflammatory events. Hence, the writing next to the dugout, PLA2 activated, play ball! Once arachidonic acid is released, it's immediately metabolized to form several inflammatory and thrombogenic molecules by the enzyme cyclooxygenase, or COX. Later, we'll show how NSAIDs exert their therapeutic effects by inhibiting the COX-mediated pathways. Let's bring Coach COX back on the field, shall we? COX exists in two primary forms, COX-1 and COX-2. Think of these enzymes as head coach Cox, Cox1, and assistant coach, Cox2. Cox1 is constitutively active in most cells. Kind of like head coach Cox, he's always active managing his players on the field. Cox1 is involved in a number of housekeeping activities in normally functioning tissues, including the kidney, GI tract, and platelets. COX-2, on the other hand, isn't active all the time. Instead, it's preferentially expressed at sites of inflammation. In fact, last time we met the assistant coach COX-2, he was taking a nap in the dugout. Well, it looks like we've finally gotten COX-2's attention. All it takes is a little inflammation, or in this case, that classic baseball prank, the old hot foot. <laughs> 